in his junior year, there was a party, and I went to the party, and he was sitting in a chair, singing a song. And I invited myself to walk up there and sing with him. He did not ask me. I just went up there and burst in the song. It was cool. The song was over, I walked away, and I never saw him again for two years. And two years later, I get a phone call from a guy with a very nice voice who said, my name is Bob, and I would like to know if you would like to join our band. I said, well, Bob, what kind of band is it? And he said, well, it's a rock and roll band. It's a real good rock and roll band. And uh, may I remind you that we live in San Francisco where all the artists and musicians in the world that were totally cool live at this particular time in history, which was the mecca of music at that point, San Francisco, in Ashbury. All the big San Francisco bands. And we were right in the middle. I'm like, okay, I'm in. So the next thing I know, Two days later, I'm going to practice at Lindsay's house, and he lives right down the street from me, unbeknownst to me. And um, so we practice four times a week, and we play two times a week, and we're really good. And we start opening for really big bands. And so we open for Jimi Hendrix, 75,000 people. We open for Santana, right before the Red Stuff movie came out. Carmel Monterey. We opened for Janis Joplin several times, Stanford's Frost Amphitheater. We opened for Creed Clearwater in Lodi, and got stuck in Lodi with Creed Clearwater because our car broke down. That is only four of the <laughs> bands that we opened for. We pretty much opened for all of them. So anyway, while this was happening, I heard a rumor that there was this great store in downtown San Francisco that where all the famous rock and roll women went and bought their clothes. And I made, we made really good money. So I said, well, I'm just gonna save my money for a couple months, and then I'm gonna go up there in my candy apple red, five-speed Colbert Monza convertible that my dad bought for me. And I'm gonna find that store, and I'm gonna buy some clothes. Well, I get up to the store, and I walk in, and I know without a shadow of a doubt that there's nothing in there I can afford, because it's a really beautiful small store. It has gorgeous things hanging everywhere, and it has a beautiful hand-painted floor. And I'm thinking, well, it was a long drive up here, but I enjoyed it, and I'm here now. And what happened was, is that I was standing, I thought, right where Janis Joplin stood, or where Grace Slick stood, or where many of the famous rock and roll women of that era stood. So, okay, it was worth the trip. There I was going, something's gonna happen. I'm having a premonition. And I think what I saw, because I felt so strongly about it, was right there in the store called the Velvet Underground. The Velvet Underground. <laughs> that something was coming, and it was big. And it did. And here we are today. And the reason I'm telling you this story is because we all have our Velvet Underground moments. And we all have a passion and a love for something that we want to do, and lots of times we don't do it. Because people get in our way and say, oh, you can't have that. You can't do that, it's not the right thing for you. And I'm here to tell you that whatever you